De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis is an underrated duo that I think we may need to look out for, man. I could see taking a breakout season. I'm telling you, I'm hearing something from upstairs. You know, I'm, I'm really feeling my intuition right now. You know, uh, something is telling me that these two are going to surprise everybody. There's always a team out there that nobody's talking about that surprises everyone. I'm not saying that Sacramento is about to shoot up the standings, but I like what's being done right now with the Kings. You know, it's going to be up to Mike Brown to get it all situated. But we got to keep it 100. This guy, De'Aaron Fox, you know, um, we, he's going to have to prove, is he, a, is he really real or is he just a guy who puts up points on a bad team? And that's something that he's going to have to rectify, you know, um, as the Kings continue to get better. Because they, they've had a shitty roster the whole time he's been there as well. You know, but he's had his opportunities. You know, he's had the basketball. You, they don't have a lot of players on there to rip it out of his hands like we've seen other players. But, I mean, it is what it is. But we got to keep it 100. This guy Sabonis, man, is a man-child. You know, uh, I'm talking about 18 points, 12 rebounds. The man is shooting 55% from the field, ladies and gentlemen. This dude is an all-out assassin. Let me tell you something about Sabonis. This man, I'm telling you, he's the last of a dying breed. You know, um, this dude Sabonis, man, um, I think he's the last guy that's really playing big man basketball. And he's not a seven footer, but this dude is strong as hell. You know, um, I'm about ready to say, arguably, he might be the best post player in basketball. Is Sabonis the best post player in basketball? Who do you wanna, who do you wanna uh, gauge who's better in the post? You know, um, in terms of scoring. I mean, a lot of people are good in the post, kicking it out, out the post, this, that. I'm talking about this dude is just old school. Give him the ball. He about to drill him, you know. Um, and I, I love the way he plays. You know, um, the pick and roll should be deadly. You know, they made this move, you know, um, before, um, you know, during the, during the season. So he did not get a training camp with them. You know, he started um, in Indiana. They have to figure this out. It was about time they got Fox some type of reinforcement. You know, it was crazy because they had Halliburton out there. I know a lot of people were shocked, you know, when they traded Halliburton. Halliburton looked like he was going to be the point guard of the future. Maybe they was going to move on and move Fox. You know, I thought Fox was on his way to Philadelphia or something like that, Miami or, or somewhere. You know, I thought he would definitely become available. But obviously, it's been a change of plans. You know, they really have faith in this kid, Fox. You know, um, and they run it with Davion Mitchell. I guess that's the point guard lineup there. Like, I would like to know what they didn't see in, um, in my man uh, Halliburton. I think it was a situation probably with De'Aaron Fox. Uh, I, I just think, listen, you got a guy, quote, unquote, you, you want to pro profess him as the franchise guy. Bottom line is I believe Fox was better than, than uh, Halliburton right now. Obviously, he has so much more experience. You know, it's going to take time for Halliburton to figure it out. But in Indiana, you know, he will have his opportunities to rise into, you know, stardom, you know, and it's up to him to put all the pieces together and do it, you know. But nonetheless, man, uh, the Sacramento Kings should be ideal, uh, be an ideal good team. You know, uh, they got Herder, they got Malik Monk, they got complimentary pieces as well. You know, the Rashad Holmes, I even think that, I even think Sabonis could be big for Holmes. I, I honestly think uh, uh, Sabonis would be great for Rashad Holmes. Rashad Holmes, I think, is a guy that's just scratching and clawing to get to that next level. You know, he, this this guy's a potential double-double guy, you know, um, and the defense that this team, you know, uh, could possibly put together, they've definitely improved on that avenue, you know, uh, and that's going to be the difference between, you know, is this going to be a hot, hot, nice little team or is it going to be a serious, you know, team this year to look out for? You know, and I would believe that's what Sacramento fans, I believe the city of Sacramento, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for a team that's not a laughing stock. Remember, the Kings are the most dysfunctional franchise in sports. You know, are uh, the Sacramento Kings. So we got to put that into consideration. Some people might look at the Knicks and other franchises, you know, but seriously, the Kings is arguably in all all sports. I'm talking about everything. Any any sport genre, you know, you could think of, the Kings will rank up there in, in the most dysfunction. You know, uh, but it's crazy. You know, they've definitely made a coaching change. They've had a lot of lame ducks. Luke Walton, Fluke Walton, you know, um, Alvin Gentry, like I said, he didn't really, he was just the interim. You know how they doing with interims. I don't remember the last interim who even got the job. Was it, um, 
was it bigger staff out there in Cleveland? I forgot who it was who ended up getting the job when, when they fired the coach. You know, usually that never happens. You know, back in the days, it used to happen. You know, uh, a lot of interims did well. I remember it was a point in time where, um, who was it, the New York Knicks, uh, they had fired Mike D'Antoni and they had Mike Woodson there. Mike Woodson ended up getting that team. After after they fired him, then later on that year, they, they signed Mike Woodson back. They gave him a real deal. And then he ended up, you know, getting the Knicks to the second seed in the East, you know, and then all, all the wonders he did for Carmelo Anthony. When Carmelo had arguably his best season in New York, you know, his coach was Mike Woodson, uh, interim, you know. So let's see what this guy could do. Mike Brown, you know, a lot of people thought it was going to be, you know, uh, a different coach in, in there. You know, so of course, people wanted Mike ja uh, Mark Jackson, but we all know, you know, they play with Mark Jackson's name. You know, was he even truly a candidate? But we ain't going to, you know, take too much time in on that. But seriously, let me know your thoughts. They should be better than Houston. They should be better than Oklahoma City. You know, uh, San Antonio is taking a regression. We don't know what's going to happen with the Lakers. A lot of people are high on the Lakers, but the Lakers have done nothing to us, you know, to prove that they just going to just leapfrog everyone and get to the top of the food chain. Nobody should have that faith. I believe that they're going to be struggling at the bottom of the Western Conference as well, fighting for positioning. Why? Why can't the Sacramento Kings be that team to squeak into the postseason? If there's any team that's going to surprise anybody out West and make it to the playoffs for the first time, why wouldn't it be the Sacramento Kings? Everything's in place. You know, you got Sabonis, a former All-Star, I think, who could get back to that. You know, out West, you know, uh, and like I said, Fox, it's time. You know, this this is arguably the best. This is not even arguably. This is the best roster you've had, you know, possibly your whole career, but definitely while you've been in with the Kings, you know. Uh, so it's time. You know, it's, it, what are you going to do? You know, you got a, a viable number two who could be a number one. It's going to be times down the stretch where they just go into Sabonis because he's just a man child down there in the paint. You know, I'm talking about just it don't matter who the hell is guarding him. He's going to pound them, you know. So, I mean, he's strong as hell. You know, uh, shout out to these two guys, man. I'm, I'm expecting big things from them. Man, this is going to be a good team, man. And, and don't forget, don't sleep on Harrison Barnes, the veteran, you know, just sitting there in the cut, you know, doing his thing. Harrison Barnes will be solid. Harrison Barnes is still putting up 16 points per game. You know, he's still being a key contributor. So the, so the Kings got it all. They just got to put it together, you know, and it's going to be interesting to see if they can get the job done. You know, um, I'm going to leave it at that. You know, uh, this is something I wanted to point out to the people, man. You know, is De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis an underrated duo? I believe that they are. And I believe that we need to keep an eye on these two. Because I'm telling you, when it's all said and done, do not be surprised if the Kings is a surprise team. And uh, be on the lookout. Shout out to all my Kings fans. Salute to the whole Sacramento. Shout out to everybody, man. The NBA season is approaching, fast approaching. Buckle up. It's Flight Sports TV. We're going live tonight. Um, you know, we appreciate all your support. If you want to take your support to the next level, we have a link for you in the description box. It's Flight Sports TV.